This is my video review of the Crosshair 6 from Asus or Asus. This is the Hero model and it features a lot of elements from previous boards. It borrows a lot of elements from the Intel Z270 product, particularly the shrouding, the heatsink and the overall feel, but it has been tweaked and refined and made its own for this particular model for the AM4 platform for the new Ryzen CPUs. So your eyes are initially drawn to the bulk of the shrouding, got a really, really nice heatsink, SLI and Crossfire support on this board. And along the base, it is just packed with features such as safe boot, retry mode, uh, USB headers, we've got connections for RGB headers. It's just got a feature everywhere. USB 3.1 front panel connections, 3D printing support, LED debugs, crazy amount of fan headers, extra power delivery. It just has absolutely everything you could want from the platform. Fan headers are spread around the board in logical place. They're all optimized to handle AOIs. We'll have additional sensors for water flow. The USB header for the front panel that I mentioned. And again, even more fan headers and RGB connectors. The IO is one of the most packed that you will find at this price point. It's literally got USB everywhere and some cool buttons such as to reset the BIOS. You've got the Gigabit LAN, USB-C, that elongated shroud that covers the IO runs right down over the audio lens and it plays a pivotal role in the overall design and the feel. It's a very aggressive looking product. It is literally feature packed. There is something everywhere you look. For storage options, we don't have any U2 here, but we do have eight SATA ports and a single M2. So what we need to do now is look at the numbers, talk about the overclocking, and I'm gonna wrap it up and give you my thoughts and award. Overclocking. If you've yet to experience the UEFI BIOS with an ASUS product or ASUS, I always say that, then you're in for a real treat. If you're familiar with it, if you're coming from Intel and you're on Z170 or Z270 or the later X99 products, you'll already be familiar with the layout. And it is without a doubt, and I've said this in all my written reviews, it is the best BIOS on the market. Uh, the layout is exceptional. The overall feel is really, really good. And when it comes to settings and options, there are things here that you just don't find on other products. Now that is relevant from the lower tier entry products as well to the mid, obviously the higher you go, the better it goes. But generally speaking, you just get more for your money in terms of options and where to play when it comes to the ASUS products. They offer an absolute mammoth amount of control when it comes to overclocking. If you just want to try and do a quick set it and forget it type of overclock, it's really, really easy to do in here. But once you start delving deeper into timings and different things, there's just so much to play with. And that is one of the strong selling points with the Asus products. Now, when it came to actually overclocking my chip, um, it's very much early days. You could say it's potato chip, you, you know, you could look at it in a lot of different ways, but my particular chips, they just didn't really want to go that much further. Right now I'm playing with an 1800X. I do plan to throw in an 1800 into the mix further down the line, but for now, my chip just didn't really have that much to give as I showed in the, the, written, the written side of the review. 
So uh, it's difficult to sort of base it because I'm I'm used to, and you're probably used to seeing crazy uh, overclocks from the Intel side. And once we come back to AMD, it's hard to sort of put it into perspective, and it's easy to get sidetracked and just focus on these little numbers compared to those larger numbers. But Ryzen does clock really well. The, the small gains when you overclock uh, Ryzen products turn into a big performance boost. So you need to keep that in mind as well when you're looking at the differences between the two. And the next thing to talk about is just general performance in other areas such as USB, M2, SATA. I'm really, really pleased that there are no weaker areas with the Ryzen and on this product. Uh, M2 was consistently strong, SATA was strong, uh, USB 3.1, really, really solid. And it's good to see that Asus have coupled up an Intel LAN solution. I'm not particularly a fan of the killer network solutions. While they do perform well uh, overall, they, they just don't have the strong, solid mins, max and averages when it comes to the Intel controller. So I'm, you know, I'm really pleased to see that. In terms of design, overall layout and just the visual elements of the board, it's really interesting. It, it's unique in the sense that you can ID the difference between this and the Intel products, but it is obviously heavily based on what's been good elsewhere. And Asus have took that, tweaked it, refined it, and made it its own AMD version. So yes, it's extremely similar to the other Intel products, and that to me makes sense because you, they're targeting either AMD or Intel. It didn't really make much sense to have two completely different looking products. So you know, anyone that wants to argue and say, well, they've just took what Intel's got and gave it to us. Well, there's nothing wrong with that. And it is actually being done in such a way that it is unique to the AM4 platform. Uh, the shrouding, the materials used around the heatsink, the way it catches the lights, the strengthening slots, everything is just epic about the board visually. And once that's coupled up with the RGB, it's really, really good. This is the kind of product that you want. It could have been a little bit cleaner on the PCB, but when you consider how much is crammed into this product, it actually looks really good. Now, RGB, it's very sort of hit and miss with the Asus products. And what, what I mean by that, I just need to get that clear straight away, is it's the amount of lighting and the lighting zones that you get on the Asus products. Some of them really, really light up your case. Others, they're a little bit timid. Now. What you really need to do is you need to couple the Asus Aura up with more products, ideally, and it makes more sense from Asus's point of view, of course, that if you drop in one of their graphics cards, it's going to look a lot better. You can sync the lighting areas up between the board and the card. And we've also got some interesting RAM from the likes of G-Scale out there. I think it's called the uh, Trident, I don't know, Kingston, and some other brands there. As I said, Gen 2, we're getting into better RGB now. There's going to be more exciting RGB products coming along, but realistically, you want to make use of those RGB headers, the 5050 headers, uh, install the Asus Aura software, uh, set up what you like. Uh, the music setting is one of my favorites because I've got a lot of background music going on during my day to day on my desktop rig and then on my gaming rig. It just gives you a really nice uh, experience when you've got uh, explosions and things going off. So, lighting as is out of the box, it's okay, it's not amazing, it won't, you know, really, really glow and uh, it's not going to look like a unicorn is thrown up inside your case. But if you add and build onto it, it looks exceptional. Um, so I'm really pleased with the lighting solution. And that's pretty much it for the Asus side of it. I don't want to digress too much yet, so I just want to try and wrap it all up. Price point, when you compare this to the competition, where it sits in the market, and what's off on offer. Actually, I want to backtrack and just mention that rear I.O. Those amount of USB ports, Amazing, really, really pleased with that. Um, back on point, in terms of where it is in the market, I think it's competitively priced considering the amazing UEFI BIOS, the strong overclocking, solid, consistent performance across the board. The bundle's really, really good as well. RGB looks good and works well. It's just a really, really good product. Now, obviously, I've got more products to see from Asus. We'll look a little bit higher up the range, and I'm already busy working on something a little bit lower down the range. So. Do consider watching those videos when they hit the channel in a few days. But for now, if you need SLI or Crossfire support, you want to go to Ryzen, you want a, a strong product that supports RGB, is solid, with no hassle, and it offers a lot of connectivity, this is the product that I'm recommending for now. So it's going to be picking up the gold award for today, and I'd like to thank Asus for sending this.